this streak is officially over. 3-1 Vegas. Edmonton's winning streak comes to an end at 16 games. That right there is the first loss for the Oilers in 2024. After winning 16 games in a row, the Oilers almost made NHL history if it wasn't for the Vegas Golden Knights. Some people think that this was a lucky run, but when you take a deeper look at what the Oilers have done to get to this point after where they were two months ago, it's absolutely incredible. Now, in order to understand how the Golden Knights stopped the Oilers from creating NHL history, we have to take a deeper look into how the Oilers even got into this position in the first place. Earlier in the season, it seemed like the Edmonton Oilers were the living embodiment of Murphy's Law. Anything that could go wrong, went wrong. The Oilers couldn't get a save, they couldn't defend, and all of a sudden, their top players couldn't score. It was the perfect storm that led to one of the most miserable times of the McDavid era. So, the Oilers did what every struggling team decides to do when shit hits the fan, and that's fire the head coach. Jay Woodcroft went out the door, and in came Chris Knobloch. Now, is coaching the sole reason why the Oilers have been able to save their season? No. But Knobloch and new assistant coach Paul Coffey have both implemented some things that have allowed this team to finally play to their potential. Looking at the numbers, this team has improved in every single aspect of the game. However, the biggest improvement is both in goal and defensively as a five-man unit. Ever since Coach Knobloch came in, the Oilers have somehow become a defensive juggernaut, especially when you look at their numbers. During this win streak, they have held opponents without a goal in 42% of game time. That is an absurd stat, and it is impossible if you don't have complete buy-in from your leaders and best players. When things were going bad, McDavid and Dreisaitl were struggling defensively with their efforts. During this run, they are leading by example. In this game during Nashville, both McDavid and Dreisaitl were consistently turning defense into offense. Off the rush here, Hyman is back, but he won't be able to get to this puck once it's centered. Watch McDavid have the awareness to sprint back and pick off this pass to start the transition the other way. That right there is Roman Yossi, one of the best offensive defenders in the game, and McDavid would have had to been aware of that way back in the neutral zone to be able to disrupt that play. Drysettle gets in the mix here as he covers up for Ekholm on the blue line when a turnover takes place. Drysettle is going to shut this play down right away by taking an aggressive angle to cause a turnover at the red line. The Oilers superstars are making far more of these plays on the defensive side of the puck, and it's ultimately leading to more offense. Of course, this isn't just limited to the superstars, as really all the players are playing with far more cohesion as a five-man unit in the defensive zone. A few months ago, I made a video breaking down the new defensive structure that Coach Jay Woodcroft wanted to implement to mimic the cup champs in the Vegas Golden Knights. They used a box plus one or a zone coverage, which is the most common defensive zone system in the league, but their issue was that they were being far too passive. You can be passive in this system, but as a five-man unit, you're looking for trigger points as an excuse to get aggressive. Lucky for the Oilers, they have gotten far better at this. The Leafs have possession on this play here, and as Holmberg takes this puck, he's going to look to make a play on his backhand. Reading this, Nurse and the Oilers get in their box one structure, and Nurse gets aggressive with Holmberg along the wall, knowing it's far more difficult to make a play on the backhand. With Nurse doing a solid job of closing down the lane along the wall, that is the trigger point that Dreisaitl and the Oilers are looking for to get ultra aggressive and steal the puck and create a double team. It's the exact same thing here, and again, it's their top players leading the charge. With McDavid being the plus one in this example, he pressures O'Reilly perfectly on the wall here, and the positioning of both Dreisaitl and Ekholm cut off options in both directions. As O'Reilly tries to avoid McDavid and send it to his support along the boards, Dreisaitl is in the perfect position for a cheeky stick lift, and that leads to a change of possession. When Paul Coffey came in, he wanted the D to start closing the gaps far more quickly, and the result has made Edmonton a frustrating team to facilitate offense against. Then you have the Oilers' penalty kill. Considering how the rise of scoring over the last few years have been mainly contributed to power play scoring being up, a strong penalty kill means you give yourself a solid chance to win. During this stretch, it has improved by 15.3% 
making it the best in the NHL in that span. The main reason for the improvement is consistency and purpose with every penalty killer. The Oilers have two sets of penalty killers, one being with Nugent Hopkins alongside Derek Ryan, and the other being Connor Brown with Matthias Janmark. Under Woodcroft earlier in the year, they were using a variety of combinations and it clearly wasn't working. Off the faceoff, Derek Ryan's sole job as a guy who wins 54% of his draws is to win it clean on his strong side and have Edmonton send a hard rim out of the zone. Now, once the power play has to reset, this is where the pair of Connor Brown and Matthias Yamark put in work. The best way to stop a power play is to deny an entry, and that happens in the neutral zone. Edmonton plays a 1-3 where Connor Brown is usually the one forward pushing the pace and forcing the play over to Yanmark to trap. Brown and Yanmark's positioning and ability to read off of each other makes it so difficult for teams to gain the zone on the entry. However, if teams are able to break through that wall, Edmonton has done a much better job at staying within structure on the penalty kill. Similar to other teams, the Oilers like to throw on their superstars in the dying seconds of a penalty kill to get them back in the rhythm and potentially catch the other team sleeping shorthanded. Of course, when all else fails, this team is finally getting some saves. Skinner has had some brilliant games and it's a testament to how defenses and goaltenders feed off of one another. When the goalie is confident that the team will take away the most high danger scoring chances, it allows him to focus on the play in front of him. Combining all those improvements has led them to this game here against the Vegas Golden Knights. Riding a 16 game win streak on the road after the All-Star break, they had a chance to tie the consecutive wins record. To start the game, we see the Oilers' penalty kill have an impact once again. With the seconds ticking down in the power play, the Oilers put on McDavid and Dreisaitl, who have fresh legs and can hit Vegas by surprise. After a perfect poke by DeHarnay on the entry, this brings a 2-0 for Dreisaitl and McDavid, and Aiden Hill must be shitting bricks seeing these two barreling down on him. In this game, the Oilers did a lot of the same things that made him successful during this run, but in a playoff-type game against the reigning cup champs, even the slightest slip-up can cost you the game. On goal number one, the Oilers collapse in the slot and they fail to clear the crease after a point shot gets through. That's just a simple miscommunication. On goal number two, a late change creates an opening for Vegas and that tiny mistake creates the space for the game-winning goal. The Oilers had their fair share of chances, but Aiden Hill was absolutely incredible. After failing to get the equalizer late in the game, just like that, the Oilers fall short of NHL history. These two teams will likely meet again with way more on the line. But for now, Vegas brought the Oilers down to earth, and that will only create more speculation if the Oilers can consistently beat top teams in the NHL. Regardless of that argument, you still need to win 16 games in a row, and that is damn hard to do in the National Hockey League. Some of it may have been luck, but a lot of it was the result of drastic improvements to their team defense and goaltending. The Oilers almost made NHL history, and while that may sting in the moment, their play during this stretch has completely saved their season.